It's the NFL on EA Sports as we get set for a Super Bowl 56 rematch. It's the Los Angeles Rams and the Cincinnati Bengals on Monday night. From the banks of the Ohio River, there's a look at what's now known as Paycor Stadium here in Cincinnati. Straight ahead, a rematch of Super Bowl 56, and it should be a good one, as it'll be the Los Angeles Rams taking on the Cincinnati Bengals. With Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. And Charles, it feels like the latest golden age of quarterbacks in the NFL. There are good ones up and down the league everywhere, but one of the best certainly resides right here in Cincinnati, and that's Joe Burrow. And Joe Cool, Joey B, whatever you want to call him, not only does he perform big time on the field, he is that magnet that pulls other players to him. A lot of guys want to get to Cincinnati and play on Joe Burrow's team. Then for the visiting Rams, you know, they found out the hard way that you need a lot of good fortune when you win a Super Bowl title. And when you don't get that good fortune as they didn't last year, things can crash down to earth in a hurry. And none of us really saw this coming. Remember, they were 12 and 5 the year they won the Super Bowl. Went 5 and 12 last year. Somehow I think this Rams team is better than what we saw last season adding in a lot of new pieces in order to try and get back to the top of the NFC West. Here's the former Cornhusker Brett Maher to get this one started. And we are underway from Cincinnati. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Here come the Bengals, and CD, of course, it's Joe Burrow out of LSU at quarterback. And when you come into the league as the number one guy selected, a lot of hype comes with it. Sometimes that weight can be unbearable. But this young man, he took that weight on and handled it as well as you can imagine. And I love his ability to make a second, third reaction play and create downfield. A good start to the drive. Here's that's caught out on the left side. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. He got 29 yards that time. Certainly no settling into the drive there. They came right out on the first play and attacked the middle of the field for a big gainer and a first down. So from Rams territory now, it's first and 10 at the 48-yard line. Out of the gun, it's Burrow. And he'll go right back to Chase. That's caught again. And he's corralled at the 40, but not before picking up eight. Well, he's one of the top receivers in the game, Charles. So no surprise here on the opening drive. They want to get him involved. And he has catches on back-to-back -back plays. And Brandon, I look at it from the defense's perspective. You know he's one of the top receivers in the game. You've got to find ways to slow him down because if he gets into high gear, he's going to shred you all game long. And he'll take this one down to about the 40. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. Well done to sniff that out defensively. He had it diagnosed pretty quickly. I love that description because diagnosed is perfect on that one. Read his keys, made the play, and he couldn't even get going moving the football. They give to Mixon to try to pick it up. And boy, he is very close to a first down, but from where they're spotting that football, he's going to be a foot or so short. I bet they thought they had picked that one up because it was a third and two call. And they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here <laughs> and maybe want to go pick it up. And on their first drive, the offense staying out there. They're going to go for it on fourth. They'll try and throw forward with Burrow. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he's taken down inside the 30. That's a fourth down pickup of 10 yards and an opportunity certainly missed on the defensive side. Charles, their first drive of the game, and already they're taking chances here, but they get the fourth down conversion. I I'm curious, do you think that that's something they game plan for on the opening drive if it came up, or is that something that happened organically? I think that they game plan for it, Brandon, and when you think about it, let's just say it. The word analytics.
analytics is a big part of how everyone looks at a game nowadays, but it's not just the analytics. It's a coach willing to be daring, willing to be bold, and they certainly were there. And that was a quality play to start a new set of downs. That was simply an offensive line winning the battle up front and winning in a big way and giving their guy in the backfield a nice lane to hit. Burrow going to get this out to Chase. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as he's brought down at the 16. The LSU connection, Burrow to Chase for the Cincinnati first. Really a solid start here on the opening drive, Charles. He's now 4-4, and they're already in plus territory. Brandon, he's been so precise to start this game. Like we're watching an operation taking place right now. Master surgeon at work. Oh, the motion comes too late, and this is going to be a delay. Hey, baby, this ain't good enough for us. Now, the offense knew it. They were already starting to walk back as that one is accepted. Now they need 15 yards on this series after the delay of game, first and 15. Burrow looking to pass. And this one complete to Smith. That's a gain of 11. Would have been a first down if not for that penalty moments ago. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches as we just saw him do there because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not, not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days, but you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target, and that's how he'll shred a defense. Six yards on the pickup, and it leaves him with a first and goal. Well, no question, this is exactly how they wanted to start this football game, and nice pass there. Now they're set up beautifully, Charles, to finish this off with a touchdown. Yeah, but they've still got to finish it off, partner, and that means they've got to execute at this stage of the field. So we've seen many teams march it right to the goal line and not cash in. They've got something dialed up here that puts it in the end zone. And he is going to lose yardage here. It'll go as a loss on the play. Not what you need down here. It's going to be second and goal. And they're getting him involved early. You feel like they saw something on tape or they just have a sense with him because he's had a good week of practice or something in that area that they want him involved. Just as you said, they want him to touch it either in the running game or the passing game. Touchdown! Joe Burrow with a touchdown connection to Tyler Boyd. And the Bengals will claim the early lead as they're on the board first here tonight. Let's make no bones about it. On paper, they're the better team. They're at home. That's a strong opening drive. And just think how many times we've seen this type of a matchup. Just what you said. Better team at home should steamroll them. And we've seen it go the other way. Sometimes, though, they buy into it and understand we are the better team. Let's go out and prove it right now. Extra point by McPherson up and good. And that makes the score 7-0. After the touchdown, McPherson on to kick this one away. And Williams going to sit on this one. It'll be a touchback. So now the Rams will get their first opportunity with a the football. They'll be led out by a former Pro Bowl quarterback out of the University of Georgia, Matthew Stafford. A seasoned veteran. We're seeing more chapters being added in Stafford's decorated career. Secured a Super Bowl ring, remains his respected leader, and his stats, they're better than ever. Now we just continue to watch him climb the ranks of the NFL's all-time passing leaders. Pass complete there to Nakua. And he's going to be dropped following a pickup of seven, past the 30 to the 32. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. From the gun, here's Stafford. And he short arms that one just a bit. It's low and incomplete. 
Charles already trailing by a touchdown early. This offense, how imperative is it for them to get points out of this drive? Well, they feel like they have to go ahead and match because of what was already on the board against their defense. But I think even more so, you just want to avoid three and outs. You want to be able to stay on the field for a little while, let your defense catch their breath a little bit, even if you don't score any points. And a catch right side by Evans. And he's going to have a Rams first down. They needed three. He doubled that. He got six. I know at the end of games, coaches always tell us that no one play won or lost a game. But this seems pretty important early, doesn't it? Their, their ability to pick up that first down on third down, I thought that was key. Well, you're already in the hole after the touchdown on the other side. How will you respond? We talk about that a lot, and they responded pretty well there. You go three and out, I think you give up a lot of momentum. You get down two scores, could be an entirely different game. So they've got a nice drive going now. They're in good shape. What's interesting to me is they're also in that spot of the field where you would take a shot. Do you change that up just because you're down a touchdown? And forget about the run to set up the pass. They're just coming out throwing. Forget trying to set anything up. They feel like they have the advantage. They feel like they have the matchups, and they're just attacking right now. Yep, going to the air on the opening drive. After one, 7 nothing on EA Sports. The Rams with the football here to begin the second quarter. Second down at six now from the 42. As they've got it as we resume action. Again at Stafford. Looking middle and that's complete. Six yards to pick up and that's a first down. Straight ahead, it's Evans. And he's fortunate to get anything from that. Give him a yard up to the 49. Yeah, things were pretty stacked up there in the middle of the line. A lot of bodies, not much space. I think ultimately, he was fortunate to get anything out of that run. Now second and nine. And yeah, they'll go right back to Evans. And across midfield he goes and into Bengal territory. And it appears we've got a member of the Rams shaken up on that last play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. This will be the eighth play of the drive. It's third and seven. Back to throw. Stafford. And that will be incomplete. I like the calmness of how he played the ball here. And no panic in his eyes as that throw arrived. Tracked it from the moment it left the quarterback's hand. And that's just where he needed to be to knock it away. Ethan Evans on now to punt. Charlie Jones deep for Cincinnati. And no one there to stop it. Hits at the eight, but it carries all the way into the end zone for a touchback. Joe Burrow and the Bengals set to go back on offense. Last drive, surgeon-like, dare I say. Seven for seven. That'll help your QB rating. <laughs> it will indeed, won't it? Can you figure out QB rating? Can you do I, it? Can no, you do the formula? No, I just know the higher the number, the better. Yeah, that's what I've been told. <laughs> that's what I know. I know that in the NFL, 158.3 is the number they're all trying to get to. I think he was that on that last drive. Operating from the 27 now. Here's second and three. They're passing here. Joe Burrow. Throw left side complete. That's Boyd. Only able to gain a couple there. And that'll leave him with a third and just a yard. Here's Burrow. Oh, he tried to fit it in on the slam, and it's intercepted. 
And his guys will take over at the 30-yard line. So this defense coming up with a takeaway, and maybe that's something that can bring a little life to that sideline. Well, I don't want to say that they've been sleepwalking through this first half because that's simply not true, but you're right. We haven't seen a lot of fire from these guys, really, on either side of the ball. So maybe that's the catalyst that they needed to get them back into this game. So first and 10 now from the 30. Evans running behind center. And he's going to get this one down to the 30. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. That was a really nice play. Be able to stack that one up. When they get back in the huddle, he's got, to, he's got to tell his guys up front, great job. They kept people off of him, allowed him to run free and make the hit on the runner. Filled the gap nicely, kept him to just a one-yard gain. To throw on second down to Stafford. And a quick throw here. That's complete. Four yards the gain, and it'll bring up a third down. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And a throw there going to be incomplete. Oh, that's going to hurt a bit because they needed to come through with a completion there. Now a drive that started with great field position is facing fourth down. Now Brett Maher for the field goal try. On the right hash, it's a 43-yard attempt. The kick by Maher is good. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. So the interception set him up with terrific field position, but three points, the end result. Yeah, we can make this one pretty simple, partner. You always want to end drives with points, but that's one that you're going to look back on and probably say we should have done better there. After the main field goal, Marr back out there to kick it away. On the return is Charlie Jones. And out a little across the 25 to the 27. Cincinnati set to take over once again. Been a little bit of an interesting start. The first drive for him, Charles, they had the passing touchdown. The second drive, he threw the interception. So we'll see what this third drive of the ball game brings. Yeah, it's kind of a tiebreaker, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, that's a tough part for them and for him because, yeah, things went really well in that first one, not so well on the second one. He wants to get back to what he did to get this game going. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. Again, it's Mixon. And he'll take this up to the 30, a gain of four. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean or else they'll just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. Here comes third down at seven. Here's Burrow setting up to throw it. And he is caught. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. 21 yards there on third down. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. Next in hit, and all oh, the ball is out. And have got it going the other way and his guys are going to get the football at the 37 yard line you remember in preseason we were going to the different training camps and visiting teams and we always would see the running backs working out and going through those gauntlet drills yep. and you know guys either slapping at the ball or the machines you got to learn to take care of it yeah they lost it there big fumble the offense for los angeles returns to the field and last time able to get three it's not what they wanted. They wanted six, but they got at least something. They mustered something out of the drive. 
they'll take it. Just, I, I like the way you've described it. Not ideal, but they'll take it. Anything to put some points on the board. But this time on offense, they don't even want to see the field goal kicker trot on the field. <laughs> they want that ball in the end zone. Yeah, they'll be going for six. So that one overturned. They say the knee was down, and that will not be ruled a fumble. Now Burrow to throw on second down. And Chase going to pick up a Bengals first down as the tackle made at the 31-yard line. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. Two minutes to play in this first half. 7-3, our score. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Now Burrow. This is caught. It's Boyd. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. This drive, it's been a good mix. Three passing plays, three runs, hitting on all three of those passes, and the last one putting him in the red zone. So wouldn't you think play action right here? Because you've got the ability and had the ability to run it and throw it. Go play action and take your shot at the end zone. Here's a throw out line complete to his running back right side. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Short completion, just four yards, and it'll be second down. I think you would agree, just a good decision right there. Goes for the safe play, gets some yardage out of it. And showed some toughness as well. As you noted, he stayed right in there. Saw the rush was coming, hung in there, took the hit, dumped it out to the outside, and now they pick up some yardage, and you have a back that's grateful to you and will continue to make plays. Now a second and six. From the shotgun, Joe Burrow. And he's got it. Touchdown, Bengals. Joe Mixon, an 11-yard touchdown. And the Bengals will extend their lead in the final minute of the half. Partner, to me, that touchdown had something that was kind of rooted in that group seeing the future. What I mean by that is they had a plan. Let's find a way to score right here before the half, and now to give us momentum going in. Yeah, we remember, of course, all scoring plays need to be verified upstairs, and I think they're going to at least take a look at this. They're taking a peek at whether or not those feet were in bounds, and obviously a big call here in the end zone. And not just the feet. How about the hands? How's the ball possessed while the feet are hopefully getting down in bounds? That's what they're trying to look at to see if it all comes together. So they called it a touchdown originally, and this will stay a touchdown after the video review. So they had it right. Extra point by McPherson up and good, and that pushes the lead up to 11. to the touchdown McPherson on to kick this one away this fielded right at the goal line and he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20 well, the Rams going to take over late in this first half and what do you think goes on here in this situation if you got the football you're trailing you're back in your own territory with just a little time do you try something you're thinking about jump starting your team right you just mentioned they're down they're trying to get back into the game but you've got to figure if something goes wrong you may have put yourself in a spot where you may not be able to come back in the second half managing risk this is a big decision here
A first and ten here, and you know, if they could just get three out of this, something about whittling it to a one-score game at half that might provide a psychological boost. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. Fair to say, hasn't been his best game throwing the football, but also not getting a lot of help out there either. Yeah, you kind of you nailed it pretty well, you know. <laughs> He's got to throw it better, got to get more help. Obviously one that should have been caught. They've got to find a way to bring those, those two elements together so they can make some progress in this one. And he'll go underneath here to Evans. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as they stop it here with just under 40 ticks to go in this first half. Here's third and seven. To the air again, Stafford. Oh, he had a man open, but he missed him, and it's incomplete. It's going to be another frustrating end to a drive here. This offense, they've not been able to get anything going in this first half, and now it's going to be time to gather on the sidelines and try to figure out what's going wrong. Who has an idea? Who has a plan? Time to implement it. Now on fourth down, on is the punt team sending this one away. Joe Mixon and the Bengal offense ready to go back to work. The passing game, they've had more success there than the running game. Maybe something they game plan for. How come they didn't tell us about it? Because they wanted to keep it a secret. <laughs> we did ask, didn't we? But I think what happened in this one is they've realized that they've established the run pretty well, and teams are going to key on that. They thought they could open it up and have success through the air, and that's exactly what's going on. Yeah, they've had success at least so far here in the second quarter. So the completion results there in nine yards, and it'll bring up a second and short. And this time, they'll just keep this on the ground. There he goes, right side. And they work this well upfield across the 45. So we've reached halftime here in the Queen City, and it's the Bengals leading this one. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, back to you guys in just a moment. But welcome, everyone, to our Creative Village Studios in the EA Sports halftime report. The Bengals got a strong performance in that first half by Joey B. Their quarterback, Joe Burrow. His two touchdown passes helped pave the way for his guys to take this lead into the intermission. All right, coach. Thank you very much as we welcome you back for quarter number three. Ready for the second half. 14 to 3 our score as we are back underway on EA Sports. From the end zone, here comes Williams. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. The Rams offense ready to begin quarter number three. Charles, it'll be interesting to see what adjustments this offense made in the locker room. Haven't really been able to get anything going offensively. Virtually nothing in the ground attack either. So certainly something has to change here in quarter three. And I'm pretty sure their friends from the defensive side of the ball told them exactly that because those guys, the stop troops, they've been playing pretty well. They've kept them around in this game. Now they've got some time. The running game struggled in the first half. Opposition knows how to focus on defending the pass here. They've got to re-energize that ground game and maybe open things up for a comeback here in this half. On second down, here's Stafford. Going to be taken in here by Nakua. The 
This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a Rams first down on a pickup of 10. Obviously an important run to avoid the three and out on your own side of the field. Shows a lot of faith in that offensive unit, doesn't it? That you want to run the ball in that situation. Pick up the first down. Also helps out your defensive guys a little bit too. Allows them to get at least one more series of downs in order to get some rest. And not much there at all. Maybe a yard up to the 43. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. A really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. On second down, a run with Evans. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. 43 yards now on the ground on just seven carries. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Just what they need, a lecture from me, but subpar offense is what helped get them into this spot. And now they're continuing the trend with incompletions. That won't get them out of it if they don't change something soon. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Now Stafford. And this throw incomplete. And the defender all over him that time, but it's going to lead to third down. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. Throwing on third down, Stafford. And that is incomplete. A misconnection there. He's hit on just 50% of his passes thus far. That's not where you want to be. Now you see the evolution of the game. You go back to the quarterbacks of old, 50% would be terrific because they threw the ball downfield almost every time they threw it. Now with the short passing game, you should be above 60% just to be in the average range. And this is off the left upright. And it comes back. It's no good. And they will remain two scores down as the difference holds at 11. So distance not the issue there. He had plenty of leg to get it there. It's that darn upright getting in the way. Always gets in the way of a good time, doesn't it? Because he hit it square, too. Sometimes you can bank one in if you get it on the end of the football. No such luck there for him. And because they couldn't hit the long field goal, they are set up nicely offensively at the 41, first and 10. They begin with a run by Mixon. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. It's a seven-yard carry to set them up with a second and three. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. They'll stay on the ground, mix it again. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Ram territory. They got two of the three they needed there. It leaves them with third and just a yard. If they're going to get a first down out of this, they're going to have to earn it because there's been tough going in the interior there. And here we are on third and one. Be prepared. Brace yourself. Going to be some contact going on. On third and one, Burrow. He's got his target. That's complete. And he's going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And now we get into the psychology of the whole thing because a lot of teams with a two-score lead in the third quarter, they almost become defensive with their offense, just playing not to lose. I think with this team, you got to figure at this point, this is a great spot for them to go into attack mode, really try and put the hammer down and finish this one off. Burrow's throw here into the hands of Boyd. 
They'll wind up getting just a yard, and that's going to bring up second down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Burrow will throw. Throwing for Smith on the out route, and it's caught. And down to the 20 he'll go before heading out of bounds. The Bengals passing game finding a rhythm. They've got another first. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz game. And you can drop anyone out of your defensive front. Defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. To give you an idea of how accurate he's been throwing the football, we're in the second half. That's just his second incompletion. Well, if he's that locked in, that means everyone's locked in because to me it's like throwing a no-hitter in baseball. The pitcher may get the credit, but a lot of people making plays behind him in the field. Another throw on second down, and this one incomplete as well. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. Here comes the eighth play of the drive, and they need a full 10 yards on third down. Now it's Burrow. And now another one thrown incomplete. The L.A. defense up the snuff in coverage there. Pushes this to fourth down. Smart move to throw that one away. You're in field goal range, so you definitely don't want to be loose with the ball. And that's great work by this defense to force a fourth down. McPherson's kick is good. And they will stretch the lead now to 17-3. So the lead extended. I, I think at this point you say, hey, defense, take us to the end. Well, if I got some good music to put to that, I could have a good country hit. I like the way you express yourself there. I think the offense has done enough so far. But like you said, if your defense is only giving up three points, it makes it a lot easier to settle for field goals on this side of the ball. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. On the return, Williams. And taken down just past the 20 at about the 21-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And really, Charles, not much of a surprise that they're losing. They just haven't been able to get much of anything going in the pass game. And as you well know, in today's NFL, if the passing game isn't working, usually not much else is working either. You're exactly right about that, partner. And I know that right now the easy answer would be, hey, let's run the football. But that might not be everything you need. So despite the fact that they've struggled throwing it, they've got to find some type of a play, multiple plays, that puts the ball in the air and allows for them to have some success. On first down, Stafford here. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. I know at times people think we use it too often, but you've got to be able to throw guys open. And when you read zone, you've got to stick it in there before your receiver gets to the next guy in the zone. Otherwise, you bring him into the play. And that's precisely what allowed that defense to disrupt the pass. Second and ten, Stafford again. Pass complete there to Nakua. And he'll be out of bounds, but able to get it up past the 45. His fifth catch tonight, and it's good for a first down. And that's one of the better plays we've seen this offense put together so far. They haven't been able to get on track much at all. But listen, they're only down a couple of scores with the rest of this quarter and the entire fourth remaining. So, stranger things have happened. They'll run on first down with Evans. And this time he's able to take it down to the 42. 53 yards rushing for him now in the ball game. On any explosive run, you can almost feel the ground shaking, and that's from the offensive linemen creating space for their runners. I had an old coach tell me before that he always told his runners, 
run around the offensive line in pregame. Get used to the ground shaking so you don't trip and fall when it happens in a game. Evans gets it again on second down. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. A second down play results in a loss of two yards. One quarter remains here as we wrap up the week on a Monday night. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports. Back now in Cincinnati. It's the Rams trailing, but they do have the football as we start the fourth and final quarter. Third and two, Stafford. Able to find the open man. That's complete. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they get five there on third and two. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. On first and ten, it's Evans. And they will only muster a yard here to the 38. That felt like a trap because it looked to me like the opposing front was on that play from the get-go. They had everyone crashing the ball carrier before he even made the line, and they hold him to just a yard. 38-yard line, second and nine. Here's Stafford. To the right of Skoranek is there. 22 yards there, a first down. Good yardage on the completion there. When they look at the scoreboard, they do understand a field goal is not going to do them any good. My guess, they're going to press the ball downfield as far as possible, try and throw it into the end zone and get a score because they know they've got to get that done and get the ball back as quickly as possible. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Evans running straight ahead. And he'll be brought down this time at the five-yard line. Ten more there and another first down. Not too many offenses want to turn down long drives, but when you're down what they are, they've got to pay it off with some points. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Now it's Stafford off the bootleg. Got his tight end. That's complete. It's Allen. Three yards is the gain that time. Second and goal. The completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. From the two now, second and goal. Now Stafford, and he's going to go down just outside of the five, right around the six-yard line. Finally hauled down for the first time this game. Multiple defenders in there to drop him. I remember throughout my career here in defensive coaches always say, guys, you've got to earn the right to rush the passer. Well, they put themselves in a great spot with this big lead, and they know they've got to throw the ball. These pass rushers have to be salivating. It is pin your ears back time indeed. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. Van Jefferson from six yards away. And the Rams have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. Well, time to let those folks know who are tuning in looking for the late local news. And we may be a moment because we've got a game again. And pardon, except for those on the West Coast where it'll be seen in its regular time, right? That's the way it works, doesn't it? But how about that? Big time drive right there. If they're going to have any chance, they needed a touchdown there. And they went right down the field and worked their way into the end zone. Extra point by Marr up and good. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter. Following the touchdown, here's Marr to kick it away. This taken in at the goal line. And he won't quite make it to the 25. Cincinnati's offense coming back here onto the field. 
That last touchdown has made this really tight. They're clinging now to this slim lead. What, the, geez, the second half, they only have a field goal. This offense needs to kick it into gear. And right now, I'm looking directly at the field general, at the quarterback. This, to me, he's got to take over right now. By word, pumping his team up, and then, of course, by deed with his play. My high school coach used to say that all the time. Laddie, take over by word and deed. And deed means action. Exactly. From the 24, they'll go again on second and 10. Burrow going to give this to Mixon. And he brought down on the 30-yard line after a gain of six. I like that run right there, partner. Not the flashiest run, not the one that's going to break for big yardage, but he understands the situation. And taking care of the football, paramount, and he got it done. Nursing that slim lead, you're exactly right. Hold on to that ball. The offense on third down tonight, they've hit it 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and four. Got a man, it's Chase, he completes it. And he is going to have a Bengals first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? That's so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or takeaway. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. Now Burrow on first down. He'll drop this one down to Mixon. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. And that's good for a gain of six. And it's second down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They've become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Burrow looking to pass. He completes it to Boyd. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. Here we go, third and one. Gut check time on both sides. Again, it's Burrow. And that's caught one more time by Boyd. And yeah, this is not going to be enough. Was in search of two yards and only got halfway there. Fourth quarter, down to the final two minutes. And we've got a one-score game. So the Bengals in possession of the football here as we get your reset. They're looking at a fourth down now as they try to hold on to this lead for dear life. The Bengals bring out their punter now as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And this will hit just beyond the goal line as it's into the end zone for a touchback. So now Stafford and the Rams trailing 17-10. A minute 55 remaining. They need a touchdown to the PAT to tie it as they come up first and 10. Now Stafford. An incomplete, a drop there in the middle third of the field. That'll bring up second down. There have been quite a few plays they might look back on and say, we really have hurt ourselves, and that was another example. And this is late game execution. Everything on the line, so it all has to come together properly. The throw is made. Where's the catch? Got a catch in that spot. Now it's Stafford. Completes this to Jefferson. And he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. You're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Well, the noise got to be an issue now offensively. Here's third and six. Stafford now to throw. And he can't get a throw off. He's taken down. What a huge play at this point in the game.
Got to avoid the flags defensively. Here's fourth and long. Desperation time for Stafford on fourth down. And it's incomplete. They cannot convert, and they turn it over. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And now possession will go over inside the 15-yard line. So now inside of two minutes, they have only one timeout left and a field goal here, and this thing's over. Or even a first down. Anything they give up here, this thing is done. So my guess about their strategy, go for the football on this first snap, try and pop it free. They don't get that done, immediate timeout. Preserve as much time as possible, and then try and do it again. If you're on offense, just take care of the ball. You'd have to think likely another running play coming here, second and 11. Another run on second down, trying to cover up. I like a guy who understands the situation. I also like a guy who you look at him and you say, that looks like a guy who knows the coach is going to say, guess what? You drop this one, you'll be carrying around the training facility for an entire week. <laughs> Maybe flashback to high school or college, carrying <laughs> it around campus, right? The old gauntlet drill, right? Anyone get the ball out while he's, while he's sitting in class and bring it back to the coach? He's in big trouble. On third down, Nixon. And oh, he's just going to be short here, barely. Maybe by a half a foot. It'll be fourth and inches. Some good strong running right there. Some power and some explosiveness just about got him into the end zone. So the field goal unit is on the field as this is a big spot right here. This to make it a two-score game. And this one is right through. So the starting field position was terrific following the surprising turnover on downs, but the end result, only three points. Simply stated, I think you have to look at that as a missed opportunity. So after the made field goal, here's McPherson to send this one away. And that final kickoff concludes the ball game, partner. And one side, a really nice win in this one. They were good on offense and on defense. And I'm guessing in the other locker room, partner, the head coach is just telling this team, hey, we didn't play well enough to keep it close enough where that one possession down the stretch might have given us an opportunity to win the game. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. It's a win for the Bengals as we say so long from Cincinnati.